how can one be sensitive to a country that has been ravaged? People who are, you know, who are forced out of their homes. People who never really recovered from the injuries and grit on them. The first place that I landed was Liberia. And nothing could prepare me for being there. You know, a place where there was really no, there were no roads, there was no electricity really, no telephone system. It was a country that had never really recovered from its own internal strife. All of these people are, are in some ways been exploited or have not been able to get back on their own feet and so I couldn't ask the questions. Questions that one asks out of compassion even, you know, how does it feel to, then you know, what was it like to? You couldn't do that because they might get too upset. So one had to, you know, really be a good kind of judge of how the moment was. The questions that I asked or the ways that I photographed had to be in a way that didn't exacerbate their, their situation. So I had to be really gentle at times. I've always been pretty intuitive. And so people writing on photographs was my way of kind of challenging the documentary practice. I also think that depending on what their story was, it would be important for some to get that story out. I would give them Polaroids. I'd give them something which was, you know, could be a, a nice gift to them. There's the whole kind of a dance that people do when they feel like they're not comfortable putting their mark on something. They're afraid they're going to ruin it. So I have to assure them that it's okay. It's nerve-wracking because there's only one of a kind and I don't want to care so much that they're going to ruin it, that it's going to ruin everything. I want to make it an enjoyable experience for them at the same time. How do you make it so that their writing is clear? That, that if something smudges, how I can fix it. So I have to assure them that it's okay, that they can just play with the colors. What colors do they like? 